Welcome to the introductory animal science uh, genetics portion. So this is genetics one. We'll go through some uh, definitions relative to genetics and then we'll talk about genetic variation. Your body has millions and billions of cells. Within each of these cells, we've got a lot of machinery to produce proteins, to metabolize energy, uh, synthesize different hormones, etc. Um, and this is all directed by the, your genes uh, or DNA uh, and organized on chromosomes. So the chromosomes are strings of DNA with uh, a protein back, a backbone to kind of hold everything together. The genes code for a protein or perform a regulatory function. The genes occur in pairs on your chromosomes. Now, uh, the DNA is nucleotides joined together by phosphate sugars. So there's uh, the DNA, we call them DNA bases. There's A, G, T, or C, or adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine. So it's just the four different bases that are responsible for all the functions in our body. So here we have a schematic drawing of a cell. There's a lot uh, that goes on in, within these cells and it's amazing how tiny and how miniature this is and the amount of work that gets done within each of our cells uh, 24 hours a day. So here we have a question on the bottom, which uh, organelle contains the DNA, chromosomes, and genes? And I believe that is going to be the nucleus here where uh, DNA uh, is contained. The nucleus contains the chromosomes. The sex chromosomes are the X and the Y. Um, so in, in mammals, if uh, you have two X's, the individual is a female. X and a Y, uh, the individual is a male. It's the opposite in birds, to the uh, homogametic sex would be the male. Uh, so the male would have the rooster, for male a bird is two Z's, the female is going to have a W and a Z. So just the opposites, males, uh, mammals versus birds. Non-sex chromosomes, all the rest of the chromosomes are known as autosomal chromosomes and occur in homologous pairs. Which organelle converts food substances into a form of energy the cells can use? Um, good question. And I believe the answer there is going to be mitochondria. Uh, the number of mitochondria per cell, per cell varies by tissue. With the, in the red blood cells, there are no mitochondria. There are going to be over 500 mitochondria in liver cells. Mitochondria are involved with energy metabolism. These organelles have their, so basically energy. That's what the mitochondria do. These are interesting, these organelles have their own DNA that regulates the mitochondria replication and the function. Now the amount of DNA is a much smaller than uh, your nuclear DNA, but if you've got 500 uh, mitochondria within the cell, it does amount to quite a bit of DNA. Mitochondria DNA is inherited maternally. As the egg is ovulated, the egg is a pretty big cell. It contains the uh, nuclear uh, DNA, but it also co may contain several copies of mitochondria. Now the sperm is a lot smaller and the sperm's not going to have mitochondria. So your mitochondria in each of our cells 
we inherited from our mothers. It's also relatively stable from one generation to the next, uh, not, mix, not much mixing up of DNA there, so it's one way that uh, geneticists can look at the relationships uh, between different animals and different species over thousands of years. Looking at the how much the mitochondria may have changed over 5,000, 10,000, 50,000 years. One huge function of cells is to look at the uh, or manufacture protein. Now, as you probably all know, protein is just a sequence of amino acids. And the different sequences will determine the function of that protein. The sequence is determined by the DNA, the nuclear DNA here. But uh, which organelle produces the uh, proteins? It's all these ribosomes. And the number of ribosomes can vary greatly by cells. All these little dots help produce the proteins at the direction of the nuclear DNA. So here we got the ribosomes, all the tiny little dots that we see distributed uh, throughout uh, the cell here. Just uh, more definitions here, we have uh, alleles. And what is an allele? Allele is an alternative form, forms of the same gene. So a lot of times, uh, a lot of examples that we'll give in a genetics class is where you get two, uh, two alleles at a loci, two alternate forms. Um, and in our illustration that we have here, we've got, uh, uh, we've got a chromosome from the mother, that's maternal. We got a chromosome from the father, that's paternal. And uh, so we've got different, I guess we got a lot of heterozygosity on this whole chromosome. So these are two alleles at this particular loci. Uh, and uh, they're different, so we get two different alleles. It's all for often represented by letters, so we can have a big W for the white allele versus the little W for the non-white. In uh, roan cattle, we might have the big R for roan, the little r for solid red, etc. You may have three alleles at a low size, so this would be another type of uh, nomenclature here. In uh, dairy cattle uh, and Holsteins, we actually have four different alleles. Uh, e um, is black, E with a superscript plus is uh, calves that are born red and then turn black, and uh, uh, two, little e, uh, two little E's will give you a red. There's also, but we're not uh, illustrated here, uh, E with a screw superscript D is a dominant uh, black gene. Now, as far as definitions go, if we're talking about alternative forms, we mention uh, alleles. For example, the white allele versus the non-white allele. And technically, uh, in biology class, they may be pretty strict on that. You need to say the white allele, not the white gene. But in the popular scientific articles that are written for newspapers on the internet, you very seldom will hear them refer to alleles. They talk about genes, and they use genes and alleles interchangeably. And for this class, we might uh, use them a little interchangeably as well. Know that to be technically correct, alternative forms should be called alleles, not alternative genes. But like I say, the uh, in society, we tend to talk about genes and not alleles. I have never picked up a magazine or a newspaper and have seen the term allele. They just talk about genes. So. Don't get excited uh, 
or critical if we use the two terms a little bit interchangeably in this class. Now the definition, uh, locus is singular, loci is plural, uh, location of alleles on the chromosome. So here we have just a rough uh, demonstration schematic here. Here we've got two homologous uh, chromosomes. This uh, square represents the centimere on the chromosome. And then we have uh, the A loci here, or the A gene. And we've got two alternative alleles at this particular location. The big A allele, the little A allele. And just finishing up with our definitions here, uh, genome is the complete genetic material of an organism. So we're looking at uh, all the chromosome pairs. We're probably looking at three billion bases. We're rather than looking at just one or studying one gene, we're investigating the complete genetic material and uh, we couldn't do that uh, 20 or 30 years ago. But now with the uh, advent of genetic sequencing and our fast speed uh, computers, we can study all the uh, variation at once. Genomics is the study of the genome and in livestock breeding especially, uh, genomics is really helping with our genetic selection from generation to generation. Functional genomics, study of how the genes work, regulate, and products of the genes. You know, the uh, chromosomes are working 24-7, but they're not turned on all at once. And it depends upon the uh, organ and the function. So in your small intestine, you may have some genes turned on while at the same time in the liver, you may have different genes uh, turned on producing different products. Number of chromosome pairs will differ by species and a lot of times the more distantly related the species, the uh, more difference you might find uh, in chromosome pairs. To have uh, further offspring, uh, two individuals have to have the same number of chromosomes. So we see here that turkeys, for example, 41 uh, pairs means they have 82 chromosomes. Humans with uh, 23 pairs, we have 46 chromosomes in any, every one of our cells. Horses uh, have 62 autosomal chromosomes and two sex chromosomes, X and Y. So we see horses, uh, other than the birds on there, kind of on the, a little bit on the upper end. We'll see if dogs have more, so a lot of variation uh, between uh, the difference, or between the Do chickens have more DNA material or genes than humans? They certainly have more chromosomes, 39 pairs versus only 23 pairs for humans. But uh, they do not have more DNA material. How can that be when they've got a lot more chromosomes? The amount of DNA material is actually very similar between uh, these species. Chickens and a lot of birds have smaller chromosomes on average. A lot of and chickens have some very tiny, what we call micro chromosomes but they pair up and go through meiosis. Everything works uh, just like it should uh, for all these species, really. And obviously there's a lot of conservation of DNA material between these uh, species. I mean, if we want to compare sheep to turkeys, turkeys have a head, sheep have a head. They have the same uh, senses, touch, uh, sight, taste, hearing, etc. So, a lot of uh, common genes between these different species. How much genetic variation is there within a species? Obviously, a lot of genetic variation across species. 
<clears throat> but there's also a lot of genes. Uh, not a million genes, but uh, latest estimates are there about 22,000 loci that contain protein coding genes in mammals. And of course, we're actually uh, studying, uh, especially with our major species in humans, uh, trying to locate, identify these different uh, genes. <laughs> Each loci would have two genes on homologous chromosomes. Uh, they may be uh, alternative forms uh, within a species. You could be homozygous. Uh, just have one uh, allele, no gen genetic variation there. Uh, there may be a loci rather than just having uh, two different alleles. You could have multiple alleles there, which increases the genetic variation. Okay, so there are about three billion base pairs on our uh, chromosome makeup. Uh, only about 2% of the DNA is protein coding genes. The rest of the DNA serves other functions, helps with replication, helps with repair of DNA, helps with regulation. When is When are these genes turned on and off? How long are the genes turned on? Uh, all very important. Number of genetic combinations possible in gametes, assuming two alleles per loci. So we're saying gametes here, that gametes would be the sperm or the egg. In the gametes, you just get half of the chromosomes. They split off uh, during meiosis as that egg or sperm are produced. So, uh, let's just start off. Let's say we have one loci, we get two alternative alleles here, the big A, little a. So we can have two possibilities in the gametes. You can have one sperm that contains the big A, another sperm will contain the little a. But only two possibilities. Now let's say we're interested in two uh, different traits, two different loci, the A gene and the B gene. So, uh, how many different possibilities do we have for gametes? Well, we can have the big A with the big B, big A with the little b, little a with the big B, and little a with the little b. So we've got uh, four different possibilities there. And as we increase number of loci, we can, so we have four possibilities here. Each of them could have a big C or a little c, so we're doubling the number of possibilities. In fact, the number of different gametes possible, if you get two alternative alleles at a loci, is the number of loci to the second power. Um, or excuse me, it's the number of two to the nth power, where n is the number of loci. So, uh, here we have 2 to the second power is 4. 2 to the third power is 8. If we'd have 50 loci, then it'd be 2 to the 50th power, which is a huge number. And that number is, let's see, we get 1,000, million, billion, trillion. Um, it's a huge number. Uh, and the moral of the story is that uh, a lot of different genetic variation in the gametes. No two sperm are alike. The genetic material within each egg is going to be also different. Uh, impossible to have two sperm that are going to be identical. Number of genetic combinations possible in an offspring. So, previous slide we we're talking about uh, genetic combinations in the sperm or the egg. Now we're talking about how many genetic combinations are possible when that egg and that sperm come together for a new individual. And if we're looking at one trait, the A gene, and we've got two possibilities there, <clears throat> there's three possibilities we can have in the offspring. We can have two big A's, 
big A, little a, or two little a's. And then as we add in on loci, we increase the number of possibilities here. So at each of these genotypes, two big A's, big A, little a, two little a's, at each of these we could have two big B's, big B, little b, or two little b's. So three B combinations under here, three B combinations there, three B combinations with the little a. So a total of nine possibilities there. And actually as we add more loci, it's going to be three to the nth power where n is number of loci. So three to the third power is uh, 27. If we have 50 loci, and definitely possibility we can have that for some traits. 50 loci is going to be third to the 50th power, which is a huge number. And he, yeah, here's that huge number now. In the United States, we have like 300 or so million people. So, a lot of possibilities as far as genotypes here. So, there are no two chickens alike. There are no, no two humans alike uh, or livestock unless they're identical twins or clones. Of course, then they can be genetically uh, identical, but you're not going to find two unrelated individuals that are identical genetically. So let's go through an example of possible genetic combinations using uh, two specific uh, genotypes. So we've got a male here, and this male is heterozygous at the A, B, and C loci. The female is heterozygous at the halo side, but uh, homozygous little b's and homozygous little c's. So possibilities in the sperm, you see the male can, just based on these three loci, the male has eight possibilities in the sperm, but the female just has two possibilities in the egg. The female, the eggs can have a big A or little a, but they're all going to have a little b and little c. To calculate the possible genotypes in the offspring, we need to multiply the number of possibilities at each loci times each other. To find the possible possibilities per loci, you might want to use a Punnett square. Otherwise, look as we have illustrated here. So, uh, take the A loci, if you look here, we're heterozygous on the male and the female. So you can get two big A's, you can get a big A from the male, little A from the female, you can get a, two little A's from each. So all three possible genotypes are possible, three possibilities. Now if we look at the B loci, on the female, the female is homozygous for the little b. So we cannot get a big b from the female. So we cannot have two big b's in the offspring. But we can have a big b, little b, two little b's. And if you look at the c loci, kind of the same thing uh, implies here. So, uh, three possibilities at the a, times two possibilities at the b, times two at the c, Total possibilities there is 12. <clears throat> so here we have another example for you to work on. Uh, so we've got a male, heterozygous at three loci, but homozygous two big A's at the A loci. The female is heterozygous at the B and C loci. All right, so we'll just give you a minute to work on this. How many different possibilities in the sperm? How many different possibilities in the eggs? And then how many different uh, possibilities in the offspring?
All right, are we ready for the answer? If not, you might just hit pause. Otherwise, we'll go on to the answers here. So in the sperm, uh, I've got the possibilities right under the loci here. So at the A loci, only one possibility. You're going to uh, get a big A in the sperm. At the B loci, two possibilities times two possibilities. At the C loci times two possibilities. At the D loci, eight possible. And then from the female, how many possibilities in the eggs? Well, we've got two heterozygous uh, loci here, so it's two times two is four. And then possibilities in the uh, offspring, actually 18, and notice that 18 is not a function of 8 and 4. We have to just back up and look at each loci individually. So A loci, since the female does not have a big A, you can get two A's. And you're not going to get two little A's because the male doesn't have a little A. Uh, the, all, all the offspring are going to get a big A from the male and a little A from the female. So only one possibility in the offspring uh, at the A loci. B loci, three possibilities. They're both heterozygous. Three possibilities at the C loci. Two possibilities at the uh, D loci. You can't get two big D's. So it's one times three times three is nine times two is 18 possibilities in the offspring there.